Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation. We have x to the power 1 over ln x equals 3 to the power 1 over ln 3. And we're going to be solving for x values. Now before we start solving, I just want to briefly talk about uh, something that we often use. We graph these two equations as functions and then look at their intersection points. If two graphs intersect, then that'll be a solution, right? But when you look at an equation like this, aren't you thinking, hey, x equals 3 looks like a solution, right? Because if you replace x with 3 on the left-hand side, it works. But another question that we need to raise is, is that the only solution? Or are there any other solutions? So let's go ahead and take a look at the graph, and I'll talk about the solution method. All right, here's a graph of y equals x to the power 1 over ln x and y equals 3 to the power 1 over ln 3. Obviously, the second one, the purple one, or the pink one, I should rather say, is a constant. So when you have a constant function, it is going to be a horizontal line. The reason why I made one of the lines or one of the graphs dotted is so you can see the overlap. So there seems to be an overlap, which is pretty interesting, but to better understand what is going on let's go ahead and take a look at the solution and then we'll come back to this okay cool cool now we have again two functions y equals x to the power 1 over ln x so let's rewrite the original problem x to the power 1 over ln x equals 3 to the power 1 over ln 3 and our guess was hey x equals 3 is going to work and if you looked at the graph carefully then you probably noticed that x equals 3 is an intersection point. So let's see how we can handle this. On the left hand side we have a function and on the right hand side is the same function uh, where we evaluate the value of the function at x equals 3. So if this is f of x then this would be f of 3. Now can you always say if f of x is f of 3 then x equals equal to 3? Well it kind of depends on the function, right? Cool. So let's go ahead and take a look at this function. What kind of function are we dealing with, right? f of x equals x to the power 1 over ln x. One of the things you can do is call this function y and then ln both sides, right? I mean, doesn't that make sense? You want to bring this down and the easiest way to do it by use, uh, natural logging both sides. So let's natural log both sides here. And then we're going to go ahead and move the exponent to the front or bring it down. And that's going to give us 1 over ln x multiplied by ln x equals ln y. Awesome. ln x cancels out, leaving us with ln y equals 1. No x is in the equation. And from here we can safely say since this is natural log with base e, then this becomes y equals e. But what is y? y is x to the power 1 over ln x and that just happens to equal e. Is this true for all values of x? Let's talk about that. But we have a finding. Our variable expression or seemingly variable expression turned into a constant and you've seen y. Now is this true for all values of x? The answer is no. Because first of all, if you look at the domain of this function, it's not all real numbers. Because if x is 0, it's not going to work. If x is less than 0, it's not going to work. So first of all, x must be positive. Because ln x is only defined when x is positive. But not only that, you also don't want the denominator to be 0. So the denominator is ln x, so ln x should not equal 0, which means x should not equal 1. So that's our domain, x values such that x is greater than 0 and x is different from 1. That kind of gives us an interesting domain. It's kind of broken down. We, If you want to demonstrate or show it on the number line, we have 0, we have 1. You're basically talking about numbers that are between 0 and 1 and then numbers that are greater than 1 because you have to exclude 1. So it's actually a union of two intervals. Okay? Cool. So what is that supposed to mean? Well, here's the thing. 
we got e from the left hand side, right? And we said that the right hand side is a constant and we got a solution from here which seems to be working, x equals 3. But if this is a constant, shouldn't it, shouldn't this be the same constant? Hmm, that's interesting. Let's go ahead and take a look. So we have now 3 to the power 1 over ln 3. And I wonder what that is. I'm going to call uh, it c because c for constant. I know it's constant, right? And then natural log both sides again, just like before, right? And then we're going to bring this down. 1 over ln 3 times ln 3 equals ln c. This cancels out ln c equals 1 implies c equals e. So what you call c is actually e. I'm not just like playing with letters. e is Euler's number. So it's a constant, right? A known constant, a well-known constant. So what is that supposed to mean? Well, x to the power 1 over ln x is equal to e and 3 to the power 1 over ln 3 is equal to e. So they're always equal. Wow, that's interesting, right? This equality is always true. But what does that mean? It means x can be anything? Yes, except for these values. So these are the exceptions. If you take them out, then you'll have all the x values. So pretty much this equation has infinitely many solutions. And the solution set can be expressed as like the set of x's such that x is greater than 0 and I should, probably shouldn't say and because well actually no that's right and should be there not or because or means either or so x does not equal 1 and of course you can also express the solution set differently you could also write it as a union like I said earlier how do you write this as a union of two intervals first of all you cover 0 to 1 and notice that that's an open interval union 1 to infinity obviously you never include infinity but you don't include 1 either because remember x cannot equal 1 make sense okay so there's basically different ways to express the solution set it's pretty much all the real numbers except for numbers that are um, negative and 0 and 1 those are the only all the exclusions. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and see what this means in that context. So remember, when we looked at the graph of these two functions, we noticed that there's a good deal of overlap. But notice that all the x values that overlap are on the right-hand side of the x-axis, in other words, where x is positive. I mean, Desmos doesn't show it, but x cannot equal 0, that's uh, for sure. And there should also be an exception at 1, which again is not shown on Desmos, too bad, but this should be an open dot. We have an open dot here and an open dot here. Everything else you see here is going to be a solution. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.